In this video, we take a look at the need for and the methods of network security. So all computer networks, whether it's your home network, a school network or a large organisation network, should be protected from unwanted intrusion and hacking. The overall aim is simple, only allow authorised people to access what they need and prevent unauthorised people any access. Now there are many methods which can be used to help secure a network. The four you need to know about in the exam are authentication, encryption, firewalls and MAC address filtering. Let's look at each in turn. So first we have authentication. Now you're probably well aware and used to this from school. The idea is that any computer might be shared so that different people can log on to it. Only someone with a valid and correct username and password will be able to gain access or authenticate themselves as a valid user. The network managers may, in addition, insist on various password rules, such as a minimum length. And on top of this, they can choose to decide what users are able to access with their level of authentication. So it's highly likely that you can access different files and folders on your network from those of, say, the teachers. So when would you use this method of security? Well, typically whenever a user wants to log onto a school or company network, and we use it to check a user has a valid account on an online system. The next method of network security is encryption. Now this is simply the process of turning plain text into something which is unreadable. Now of course this doesn't actually prevent hacking, but it does make the data impossible to read if indeed you have been hacked. The plain text is encrypted with the use of what's known as an encryption algorithm and a unique key. And only someone with the appropriate key will be able to translate the information back into its original readable form. So when might we use encryption? Well, in any situation when you want to make plain text unreadable by an unauthorized source. Typically, you'd use this especially for the transmission of sensitive data. For example, things like passwords, credit cards that you type in an online shop would all be sent encrypted. The third method is firewalls. Now, a firewall is a piece of software or hardware, or quite commonly both, which is configured to let only certain types of traffic through it. It can be set up to prevent unwanted internet traffic from gaining access to a local area network. But at the same time, it can also be configured to prevent people inside a local area network from accessing parts of the internet that people in that network don't want you to. You, again, you're probably used to this from school. You no doubt have a firewall installed that prevents you accessing information on the internet deemed inappropriate during school time. A firewall can block certain ports and types of traffic and can even inspect the contents of traffic that is traveling across the firewall to see if it looks suspicious. Most operating systems and indeed your home router will come with built in firewalls, but you're also able to buy more sophisticated ones from private vendors. So when would you use this method of network security? Well, as we said, home systems use them automatically as firewalls typically become pre-installed. Schools and larger organizations will tend to use them such as banks and they will have dedicated firewall systems. The final method of network security is what's known as MAC address filtering. Now, every single physical device, whether it's a mobile phone, a tablet, a PC or a printer, has what's known as a unique MAC address. Now, this is different to an IP address. A MAC address is universally unique and it's actually embedded at the manufacturing stage into the device's network adapter. It's therefore possible for network managers to create what are known as whitelists. We add the MAC addresses to this whitelist 
and that means that any device which tries to connect with a MAC address that isn't on the list is prevented from gaining access. Now, once again, this does not prevent an unauthorized person from using a device that's already on the white list, but it does prevent them from using any device that's not on the white list from gaining access to your network. So when would you use this type of network security? Well, wireless networks is quite a common place and it allows only a set number of physical devices to connect to a wireless network and not anybody who happens to be in range. 